Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and today we are going to unbox the limited edition Easter card kit from Simon Says Stamp and create some fun projects. Let's get started. Today we're going to create a couple of simple watercolor background cards using lots of products from this card kit. So let's open it up first and see what's inside. I love how they always come packaged in a nice box and then everything tucked into a sack. Now I want to let you know that there is a die and embossing folder I believe that was not included in my kit that will be in yours and that is just simply because it wasn't available when they shipped these out to designers. Right off the bat, there is an acrylic block included in the kit, and I love an acrylic block. Um, I like to replenish these. I use them often in my crafting, maybe not always for stamping, but they're great for holding things flat as paint palettes and good things like that. A Distress Mica stain, a Detail Water Brush Pen, I love these, a pipette, we have some little teeny tiny pom-poms, perfect for bunny tails, some distress crayons in beautiful pastel colors. We will be using the blue and the green to create our background as well as the distress mica stain. Some gorgeous pattern papers, two-sided so you get lots. Some watercolor cards, perfect for using with those distress crayons or other watercolor product some sentiment strips, a brand new stamp set, so cute, we're gonna be using this as well. And then you do get a sheet of the Velveteen white cardstock and a sheet of green cardstock and two watercolor cardstock card panels. So an amazing kit, you can make tons of things with this, and I am going to share how I created two cards using mostly just components from this kit. So starting with the one of the watercolor card bases, and just full transparency, I would have used all, I would have used both of these, but I messed up the first one. I was gonna use them as the card base itself and I messed up the first one. So um, I had to get creative with what I had left. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this panel, which is a half sheet of cardstock, and I'm going to die cut it once we've done our watercoloring and that way I can divide it into two cards. So, you know, sometimes best of intentions, things don't always work out that is okay we are going to make the best of it the frosty mint now we're and going Wonderland to take distress crayons and i am going to use them to create my backgrounds so obviously a lot of the blue for the sky and then a lot of the green for the bottom so far we're using the watercolor cardstock from the kit two of the distress crayons from the kit and that water brush pen. I filled my water brush pen with water and what I'm doing is I am taking a little bit of water, picking it or in, then picking the color up from my crayon and applying it. I tried a couple of different tactics and ways to do this and I'm going to be sharing those in the video here. Now, what I found worked the best actually. So what I didn't like was coloring on the cardstock and then trying to blend it out with water. I felt like trying to get a smooth application was hard that way. Picking up the color with the tip of a water brush pen and then applying it to the watercolor cardstock, I liked a lot more, although a very light application. What I loved the best was actually adding water to the watercolor cardstock panel and then taking the crayon directly to that watercolor, or to, pardon me, to the water on the watercolor cardstock and then blending it out. So I kind of used a combination of picking the color up from the pencil with my water brush pen and then also applying water to the panel and then taking color from the crayon to the water. So you're gonna see a lot of that 
here on my panel and I think that that really worked out the best. So here I'm going to show you, I just laid out the card flat, I added water, then crayon, then blending it out. And that really worked fantastic. So we're going to do the same thing. And I just built up that color a little bit more. So I added a little bit more green on top so it would be a little darker. And I'm really just scribbling. All I'm doing is scribbling uh, with my water, scribbling with the crayon, and then blending it out. Now I do want this layer to be dry or mostly dry. I really wanted it all the way dry. So I did take this to my uh, heat tool off camera and I dried the panel. You could also let it sit and completely air dry if you want to. Once I have done that, I want to take my Distress Mica Stain that was included in the kit and we want to add splatter or spatter to this background. Now, what I originally had thought was, let's just try to add a little a bit of the splatter to the card. I think that's going to look amazing. I always love a mica stain splatter. And I did. I, I splattered it and I thought, it's okay. It's maybe, you know, it's not bad. It's not good, whatever. I always, it doesn't really matter. I like it. But where I didn't get my panel all the way dry, I guess is what I want to say. See how you can see the mica stain kind of moving in a couple of those spots? I was like, oh, I kind of like that. How would it look if I took my water brush pen and added that to the mica stain and just added another layer of kind of that watercolor look on top? Oh my word, you guys, I absolutely love it. So I ended up blending out all of the white or pardon me, the mica stains uh, splatter, and it gives just another layer of depth and dimension to my card, plus beautiful shimmery, um, you know, that effect that the mica stain has, and I absolutely loved it. Again, keeping it really messy, very loose, uh, nothing specific or anything like that. Okay, we're going to set that aside to completely air dry. We're going to take our images from the stamp set included in the kit. This is called Hoppy Easter. Absolutely beautiful images. And these are very simple cards. This is a what I call a simple watercolor backgrounds cards or backgrounds video, pardon me. But that being said, our images are pretty coloring intensive, meaning that I took quite a bit of time coloring them. There is a lot of little parts and pieces to these, but it, they are absolutely precious. So I stamped both of these on a piece of smooth white cardstock using Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink, and then I am coloring in the images with my Olo markers and um, I have sped up the video a little bit. Remember here on YouTube, you can always speed up or slow down videos. So if you need to see it a little bit slower, you can always do that. I decided to try to maybe speed it up just a little bit because otherwise we would be here for a long time for very simple cards, I guess is what I wanna say. Now I know her cheeks look kinda of like clown cheeks. Don't worry, we'll come back, we'll fix it. We're gonna add another layer. I really try when I am using alcohol ink markers to not oversaturate my cardstock so that it doesn't bleed outside the lines. I am coloring on Nina 110 pound weight cardstock today. Um, that is just my preferred coloring medium, paper medium, paper medium is what I want to say, sorry, for alcohol ink markers, whether it's Copics or whatever. And I have really kind of found my rhythm with these Olo markers and I love it. Now I tried to pick up the colors that matched the look and feel of the kit, really. Um, the look and feel of the distress crayons that came in the kit. So you're going to see lots of pinks and blues and mint colors. I really tried to mimic that look and feel so that when we put these images on our watercolor backgrounds, they blend in beautifully. I love that the little girl has bunny ears. And I will say that I ended up working on her skin off and on throughout the coloring of this, simply because I felt like 
she had too much white there in the center, almost like a really harsh highlight, I guess, or too much powder on or, you know, one of those things. Um, so I will come back to that off and on throughout the coloring of this to work on it and fix it. Here is that minty color. I love the eggs in this image. I am using quite a few uh, um, alcohol ink markers today, so I will have all of those listed and linked down in the description below, as well as a link to Olo for the markers that I am using. I, again, absolutely love them. I use the brush tip pretty much exclusively, but you get amazing, amazing results with these. I couldn't be happier. And again, I will make sure and have the color combinations listed down below as well as over on my blog for easy reference. I'm gonna keep working my way through these images. Now, I think, I'm trying to think, I feel like I added a color that I wasn't crazy about and I color over it here in a little bit. It's either on this image or the other one. We shall see it in a minute. I tried not to re like introduce too many new colors. The other thing I want to note, I did not have coordinating dyes at the time of filming this video, but you'll notice that these images have been cut out. And if you have been here for a while, you know how I feel about fussy cutting. It's called cussy cutting and we don't do it. <laughs> That's not entirely true, but for these images, for sure, there's no way I would fussy cut these. Just absolutely zero way. Too detailed, too much of a sketchy outline. So what I did was I grabbed my um, scan and cut and I cut out my images with the scan and cut which just means it scans the images and cuts around them. So if you do end up getting the coordinating dies, your die cutting might look slightly different than what I have on my cards. And I just wanted to explain why that was. So now we're gonna move on to the second card. I did choose the bunny sitting on top of the eggs. The other images that come in the kit are a sweet little bear standing on a pile of eggs and then a bunny holding on to a daffodil, which is just precious. And all of them are super cute. And probably if I hadn't messed up those other two watercolor, there are that other watercolor card, I might've tried to do all four of them, honestly. Um, so... Just gonna work our way now through this card. And I think I changed the color on this card. Looking at it here, hmm, I really can't remember. It doesn't matter. I did add the minty green down at the bottom and I was very pleasantly surprised at how well this minty green color matches the um, frosty mist, frosty mint pardon me, color of Distress Crayon that we used. Oh no, it's this stripe right here. I didn't like the light blue. I went over it with purple. I knew I colored over something on the card. Yes, and I like the purple a lot better on this. We'll use the blue over here on the other egg. How about that? And we'll do like lots of blues and purples here with a little, little bit of, of yellow. Again, just keeping pretty consistent. I think these would make a lovely card kit. Card, I mean, card set, not card kit. This is a card kit. A card set if you wanted to put together a set of cards for um, a friend or family member. I think that would be really fun. You could do a whole set of like thank you cards or something like that. Once we have everything colored, again, I am going to take this to the scan and cut. I did add detail to the eyes on my images with a black jelly roll pen. I like to use a black pen to make sure that the eyes really pop. I also added some little white highlights here and there. Not a ton, um, a couple on the eggs, cheeks on the girl and the bunny, um, little things like that. 
And then once we have everything die cut, we can glue these down to the panel. I do want to die cut my panels. Remember, I took that card base, that watercolor card base included in the kit, and I watercolored two panels on it. And so I want to, you could use a paper trimmer to trim that down, but I am going to use the basic rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp to cut out my two panels. They of course have dried in the time it took me to color and die cut my images. There are my two cards. Now before I attach anything, I do want to stamp some sentiments. I did pick the sentiments from the Hoppy Easter stamp set and each card is going to feature two different sentiments. So for the girl card, it's going to read, Hey cutie, you're extra special to me. And the bunny card is going to read, You're a good egg, wishing you a happy Easter. I did kind of play around with the different sentiments. You could really use anything here and it's going to work great. Um, I used the, I think it's the mist Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink. I will have that li linked down below in the description. And I stamped directly over the background. And then we're gonna do that on the second card as well. Now, this is the one I, I kind of played around with the sentiments. I didn't love the scripty happy Easter on this one. I liked it on the first one. I felt like it matched nicely. But this one just felt like it didn't fit as well, and so I ended up playing around with it a little bit and came up with You're a Good Egg to use in that nice little spot, and then wishing you a happy Easter. Really trying to play on the bunny theme of this card design. And again, we will stamp both of these with that same positively saturated ink. I don't know about you guys, but I am so visual, so I like to lay it out and see what it looks like and kind of play around with the different elements and sentiments and all of that good stuff to see what I like. I tried to not overfill these cards, instead letting the watercolor uh, imperfection of the background really help reinforce the rest of the card design. The images pop against it. It's a beautiful, nice pastel, but still interesting. And then just kind of tying those sentiments into the overall look and feel of what we're creating. Next, I decided to glue the images directly to the card panel. These are gonna be cards that are super easy to mail because they are relatively flat. Um, they could be completely flat. I say relatively because at the end, I have a wild hair to add, that's kind of funny. We have a little hair here on our card, <laughs> a bunny hair. Uh, I decided to add a little bit of dimension with embellishments. But other than that, these would be fantastic flat cards, very easy to mail. I know if you're like me, you worry about things going through the mail and maybe getting crushed or messed up but you still wanna send beautiful cards and this is a great way to do so. Next, I'm adding glue all over the back of my panel. Now, the thing about the watercolor cardstock is you can see that it's curled up a little bit. And I did use the second largest rectangle panel and that comes in handy because it leaves, or it creates this beautiful white border all the way around. And this is where your acrylic blocks come in handy. Um, I know that's not what they're meant for, but I use them to hold my panels down flat all of the time. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the one that came in the kit plus some extras and flatten out my cards. Next, I did go to my stash and grab the Rainbow Splash Gems from Simon Says Stamp. I always love a fun little scattering of embellishments on my cards, and these just to me were the perfect little finishing touch here. I think other little sequins or pearls or bits and bobs would also be darling, but I just wanted to add a little something. Now, this is the dimensional embellishment part. If you want to completely ensure that your card's you know nice and flat, you could totally leave these off. Then, right as I thought I was finished with my cards, I remembered here on my desk, you can see it down in the bottom right corner, that you got some little white palms in the kit. And I was like, oh my goodness, how cute 
would a little white palm be on the bunny's tail? That would be so precious, so fun, and the perfect little finishing touch. So I took the little palm and I'm going to simply glue that down in place again using the glue from the glue press and let that sit and dry. That is going to create a little bit of dimension and will even more so than the gems make that a little puffy so be aware if you use little palms and things on your cards you might want to add you know something to protect them or mail your card in a padded envelope so that is it my friends i hope you have enjoyed these super fun easter cards using the simon says stamp limited edition easter 2024 card kit the supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you in the see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new paper crafting video or I go live. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next time.